Hey guys, how's it going? Um, Kevin from Fieldcraft Survival. We're going to talk about land navigation. We're going to try to keep it real simple. Uh, we're going to do them in like 10 to 15 minute blocks and we're going to add to it each time and make it make it more and more comprehensive. This came out of the bug out on foot course that we did where people were asking for online navigation that they could use as a training mechanism before they get to the course. So this is geared towards navigating in the United States. It's the same across the world, but obviously the maps are different. I'm gonna tell you which map I recommend, which compass I recommend, and I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible, which means we're not gonna talk about that long. We're gonna talk about UTM real quickly. And we're mostly gonna talk about MGRS, Military Grid Reference System. And I promise you it'll be super easy. Okay, let's get started. So on the top here, the Department of the Interior, U.S. Geological Survey, USGS map. Come across here, this is the area, it's for Groom Creek, Arizona, Yavapai County, that's where we're operating. Uh, come down to the bottom left. Some of this information, if you're running a GPS, you will be asked what the datum is and all that. You'll find that information here, okay? The, um, there is some extra information here if you're interested. On this map, uh, the grid zone designator is 12 Sierra and the 100,000 meter square ID is uniform delta and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, also, this is an extremely important piece of information. There's three norths on the map. Of course there is, why wouldn't there be? So you have true north where the north pole is, you have grid north where the grid lines on the map point, and you have magnetic north where you, the needle on your compass pulls towards that magnetic field. And these three can be different, but not always. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Look at the uh, the scale. The scale of this map is one is to 24,000. So that just means for every unit of measure on the map, there's 24,000 units on the ground. So for every inch on this map, there's 24,000 inches on the ground. Um, you have different scales here in kilometers and meters and feet. The contour interval is 40 feet. So um, these are these contour, brown contour lines that denote a uh, difference in elevation. We'll talk about that in a little bit later. Uh, coming along here, Arizona, these are the adjoining maps. If you're navigating and you're gonna go out, north, south, east, or west, west these are the maps sheets that would, would match up. And then this is the, uh, the legend or marginal data that explains features on the map. Now, one of the two things I really don't like about this map is the legend is weak. It's not very comprehensive. And I'll show you an example of that, uh, something better. And then the contour lines are very, very difficult to see. You can see I highlighted them here, trying to make them more to pop out, okay? Um, and then the, the Groom Creek, Arizona, and the date. The date is important because the magnetic variation will change and then vegetation changes over time. Yeah. All right, so I've got three maps here just to show you the, the difference in them. Uh, two of them are the same uh, Prescott, Groom Creek, Prescott Valley, but one is from 1974. I don't know where Mike got that. And one is from 2018. The third one is a military map that we used for Camp McCall in uh, North Carolina, and I'll just show you the difference. So. Once you look at, these two are of the same location, but the magnetic variation is different. Right here, the magnetic variation is 13 and a half degrees. And for the same area, it's 10 degrees here. 10 degrees, uh, 39 minutes. Um, the reason is that the magnetic variation changes over time. All right, so let's talk about that real quick. You can see the star here, that's true north. Okay, that's the north pole. The grid north is the, the, where the lines on the map point, and magnetic north is where the needle on your compass pulls towards that magnetic field. This is different for every part of the world, and it's different for every part of the United States, and it changes over time. All right, if you wanna look up, we're gonna look up here. This is the isogonic chart for the United States, and you can see that everything's being pulled into the center. If you're around here, then your, your magnetic north and your true north are the same thing. But as you go east or as you go west, it changes. Right now we're in Arizona, so our magnetic variation is 10 degrees, all right? So 
if you're over here up in New York, you're like freaking 12, 15 degrees, something or somewhere up here, all right? So everything's getting pulled towards the center. So that's something you absolutely must adjust. And you can do it two ways. You can, once you, you take a grid, you can, you can physically change it. Or with this uh, Sunto compass, you can, you can lock it in on your compass. And we'll talk about that a little later on. So that's the difference here between this uh, 2018 map and this 1974 map, all right? Now, they're both one to 24,000 scale. If you look at this military map, it's one to 50,000 scale which means it covers a bigger area with less detail. So always try to go for one to 24,000 or smaller if you can get it. Uh, the other difference is the contour interval, which depicts elevation above sea level, are 40 feet. Uh, each line is 40 feet. On this one, it's 40 feet also, but on this one, it's 10 meters, okay? Military use meters a lot. Um, the legend or the marginal data is much better on a military map than it is on a civilian map. So what I did was I went to the USGS website and I downloaded all the marginal data or all the legend that explains every part of this map. And what you can do is you can just laminate that to the back of your map. All right, let's say look at the map in a little more detail and let's look at the colors. Obviously green is vegetation. All right, and like I said, that changes sometimes over time. Uh, blue is water, any body of water is in blue, even small streams, and a lot of times the writing is in blue also. Red are major highways. Black are man-made objects, like small, smaller roads or houses. There's some houses up here as well. Um, and then brown is con contour lines. So contour lines are lines on the map that depict elevation. So you can see here, right here is 7,200 feet. The heavier contour lines are index lines, and that just makes it easier for you to count. So if we're at 7,200 here, there's a line above it and another line. So this is 7,240, 7,280. So that, that hilltop right there would be 7,280 feet above sea level. Okay. All right, so each map is split into sections. If you can see these boxes here, the contour lines are a little hard to see. Each box is one kilometer. It covers one kilometer on the ground. Now, in, a, in order to get into a, a specific point on a map, we use a, a grid. Now, you can use lat long, latitude longitude, which we're not gonna use here. You can use UTM, or you can use MGRS. Universal Transverse Mercator or Military Grid Reference System. These are the same thing, pretty much, okay? When you run a UTM grid, you drop this little number right here and you drop this two-digit number right here and it gets you the same as an MGRS. I'm gonna use MGRS, number one, because I've been using it for decades, and number two, it's very simple and uh, it's more straightforward. So, when we write a grid for MGRS grid, the first thing we put is the grid zone designator. In this case, it's 12 Sierra. And then the 100,000 meter square ID, uniform delta. And then we're gonna do a grid. Now, if you come up here, if this is a section of the map, it goes across uh, 64, 65, 66, and then it comes up 10, 11, 12. 12, all right. Now, if I give you a six, a four digit grid like this, six, five, one, one, you always come in the door before you go up the stairs. All right, so I come in to six, five, which is here, then I come up to 11, which is here. That would mean what I'm looking for is in that square right there. A four digit grid gives you a, a, a search area of a kilometer. That's a big area. Now, if we wanna break it down a little more, I can give you a six digit grid. So 655, 115. 
So six sides, six five five would be halfway through, and then one one five would be halfway up. So that would depict six five five right here, one one five up here. So where did they meet? Would be where I'm talking about, and that that gives you a search area of a hundred meters. Okay, if you want to go even more finite, which you do for navigation, we do uh, eight digit grid. So six five five five. So six five five would be here, and this would be six five six. So halfway between there, and then up one one five five. That'll give us a grid somewhere in there. That gets us to within ten meters of where we're going. Now you can break it down even more and get it to within a meter, but for general land navigation, uh, an eight digit grid will suffice, and that's what we'll be using here. All right, so remember you come in the door before you go up the stairs. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So just for uh, ease, of, ease of use, I'm going to use a protractor. You can also use your compass, and I, I will get to that when we get to the compass. Now be super careful when you use this protractor because there's a bunch of different scales on it. You look here, this is 1 is to 10,000 or 1 is to 100,000. Um, the... Uh, what we're looking for is right here. One is to 24,000. You come across. So what this does, it breaks that grid square into a smaller area. So this is the grid line 66. It comes up and I've, I've put the edge here, the other edge here, and then it breaks it up into um, different segments. Now, let's say I wanted to get a grid of, let me find something, this hilltop. Look at that mountain. All right. All I would do was I would use the, the correct um, scale. One is to 24,000. And I'd put that gap right there. And then come in the door before I go up the stairs. So it's 12 Sierra, uniform delta. And I'm going to come, this is 6-6, six, 6-6, six. Six, six. and then within that, actually it's 6-7, six, 6-7-1-0, six, and then we're going to come up. And we're going to go 07. We're going to come up 76. Okay, that's an eight digit grid for that spot right there on the mountain. And it gets us to within 10 meters of that location if we're navigating to it on the ground. All right, do it again 67 to run the 67 line. Here we got the right scale. Six, seven, one, zero. That's one, zero. Okay. And we come up zero, seven. This would be zero, seven, five. This would be zero, seven. I'm sorry. This would be zero, seven, seven. This would be zero, seven, eight. So it's like zero, seven, seven, Eight, maybe. All right. That's how you get a grid with the MGRS system or the UTM system. Let's talk about terrain features. I'm going to take a couple of really prominent ones. This is a hilltop. So a hilltop you can tell because you've got your elevation and then you've got your contour lines going around. The closer the contour lines are, the steeper that hill. So this is kind of steep and then it drops off kind of evenly. And this would look like this on the ground, kind of steep on one side, dropping off on the other. And I'll show you an example. So 7155, let's go 7113, Mm -mm. Okay, that's seven one five five. 
line is right there. And then we're going to come up one, three, four, five. One, three, four, five gives us this point right here. Okay? That's the hilltop for this grade. Now, if you want to know the elevation of that, all you got to do is find the nearest index contour line, which is probably this one, 7,200. And then you just come up, so it's like 7,300, I think. Yeah, no, 7,000. You follow this index line, that's 7,000 and they're 40 feet apart, so that's 7,040 feet right there for that hilltop, all right? Tons of hilltops around here, and some of them actually have the, the, the um, elevation written on them. All right, easy to find the help. All right, so a saddle, a saddle is a, a piece of low ground between two hilltops. So if you look at this is a hilltop and this is a hilltop, and then you have a, a like a, it actually looks like a saddle in between both. And so that's what we're looking for. So 7306, 7306, uh, 7310. 0625, bang, right there. So that grid depicts that saddle. See high ground, high ground, and this is the saddle in between. Now, if you're looking at it from the on the ground, it looks like this, but on a map, it looks like this. Okay? That's a saddle. And we do one more, a ridge line. A ridge line is a series of hills, or it can be one hill with a ridge coming off it. So this, across the top of these three would be a ridge line. And an example is 6805, 6805, So right here, you look at these three hilltops, and you got a ridge line across, it's actually called Ash Creek Ridge. You got a ridge line where you can walk across the three and maintain your elevation, okay? But that's how you find a grid on the ground, and that's what these three uh, major terrain features look like. And then there, there's a few more that we can get into in the next class.